Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I am Carl Grossman. The subject, Building Green with Alex Wilson. Alex Wilson is the president of Building Green Incorporated. He's the executive editor of the Environmental Building News. He's secretary of the board of the U.S. Green Building Council, and he's an author, a co-author, an editor of numerous books and manuals, including The Consumer's Guide to Home Energy Savings, something which we all need. Hello, Alex. Hello, Carl. Great to meet you. A pleasure. For starters, when we talk about building green, what do we mean? Well, it's a way of designing and building structures, be it houses or commercial buildings, institutional buildings, that looks at the overall environmental impacts of those buildings. And a whole range of impacts from uh, indoor air quality for the people living in those buildings to resource use to energy consumption and water consumption of those buildings. It's really a way of thinking about buildings and it's an integrated approach. You know, back in the 70s, there was a strong movement toward solar energy and renewable energy. And the, the green building movement grew out of that, but it takes a broader, uh, broader exposure to that, uh, looking at uh, not only energy and not just renewables, but the whole range of issues. But in terms of support of what, what you're about, uh, there was a very telling editorial you wrote in the uh, Environmental Building News, let's see, October 2002, wishing for a can-do attitude. And here you write uh, how after 9-11, uh, the terrorist attacks on the United States, President Bush could have declared that the nation was going to work together not only to protect our nation from the ravages of terrorism, but also to wean our nation from its dependence on oil. A Manhattan Project scale commitment to renewable energy could have at the same time reduced our dependence on the Middle East, reduced our inadvertent funding of terrorism via the Saudi Arabian oil pipeline. You go on and on and on. Have Bush could have, he could have been way up there on Mount Rushmore, you suggest, if he would have jumped at that point into uh, promoting, pushing renewable energy, green energy, the kind of thing you're all about. But you say tragically he didn't. Can he, can this nation's administration now do the right thing? Well, as I said in that piece, I think there was a, an opportunity, and I may have described it as a once in a generation opportunity to really bring about fundamental change, a real paradigm shift in the way we looked at energy and resources and consumption. I feel that a lot of the anger that's been directed at this country and which I feel really fueled the 9-11 the tragedy directly relate to our profligate consumption of energy. Well, it, it often becomes a matter then of what we can do. And as I had mentioned before, you wrote this interesting book, The Consumer's Guide to Home Energy Savings. Perhaps you might provide some recipes for uh, people with homes, also people with apartments, as to what they could do to, uh, uh, to do things green and save money and... Uh, Oh, uh, help save the environment. Sure. There are a huge number of, of opportunities there for homeowners to reduce their own energy bills and to reduce their contributions to environmental degradation. These range from replacing incandescent light bulbs with compact fluorescent light bulbs to upgrading their appliances. The book that I wrote with the staff of the American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy uh, really directs people to these action items. And it's a, it's a great book. They've sold, I don't know, 150 or 200,000 copies since the first edition came out, I believe in 1990 or 91. But it's the, you know, the practical ideas that, that you and I can implement very easily right away. How could people best perhaps get their state governments, get the Congress, uh, get uh, county and, uh, and city and town governments, get their school districts to go in the direction of building green and all of what you've been crusading for for so many years. 
Well, that's a great question, Carl, and it's a, it's a challenging one. Um, at the same time, the federal government isn't really playing the role that it should. The, the budgets have gotten tighter for everybody. You know, so the, the local school system in Brattleboro, Vermont, or the state government in Vermont, you know, they have less federal money to, to work with on bringing about changes. So it's really going to take a lot of ingenuity at all levels. And it's going to take activism on the part of the, the taxpayers and the people who are sending their kids to school or the homeowners who want to reduce their own costs. And it's going to take a lot of creative solutions. But I, I guess I remain optimistic that, uh, you know, that we can find those solutions. And I, I think that uh, you know, we're not going to see static energy prices for the rest of our lives. I think sooner or later, and probably a lot sooner than many people think, we'll be seeing some pretty significant escalation in energy costs. You know, for gasoline, for natural gas, for, you know, all, all forms of fossil fuel. And that's really going to fuel a, a very dramatic shift in focus. And people are really going to wake up when they're paying four or five dollars at the, at the gasoline tank. For more information about all these things that Alex Wilson's involved in, just check out the website of Building Green at buildinggreen.com. Thank you so much, Alex. And to get a copy of this Enviro close-up or any of the programs of Enviro Video, just visit our website at www.envirovideo.com. I'm Carl Grossman. Thanks for watching.